This case still has nothing in it. I don't have a working computer. Today, that's gonna change. I am starting a timer for 365 days. By Tuesday, August 8th, 2023, this has to be a working computer. If I do one video a week, that's 52 videos from now to a working computer. Putting a computer I've designed from the ground up, CPU and all, software, everything into that case. We want the new retro computer. What do I mean by this? Microsisk based computer running in my retro computer. Minimal OS text based image on the screen. Least four feather slots. We want to be able to use the keyboard. It needs some sort of disk. SD card reader. The screen should be a VGA. So that's our goal. That's where we're headed. Before I can get there, we gotta make a stop on this calculator here. 20 keyboard. I want four slots on this one. Three wing slots. The idea here is that I need two slots for, to drive the display, I need one slot for this, and then I want another one for like an extension of some kind. Battery, complete C110 functionality processor. We want, also want a 3D printed case. We do that, I'm happy. Those are our two major mileposts. This is our main next project. And then we're gonna hop onto the, the retro calculator, at, retro computer after that. In order to get here, I have a whole bunch of tasks that I need to do. Produce final PCB. Changes, I need to relay out the keyboard with tighter profile, tighter spacing. Uh, it needs four feather wing slots. I guess the battery will plug into the feather directly. Let's just go ahead, maybe a battery plug. It needs a on off switch. This is not gonna be the most power efficient, so we wanna be able to actually fully turn it off, not just turn the display off. Once we have the PCB, we need a Microsys feather. Before I get there, I actually need a hardened so right now the, the Microsoft processor is behaving a little oddly, so I need to harden that up. Before I can do that, I need I need reliable tests for the MuSys processor that I can just run and make sure that it, like with all sorts of different instruction orders, make sure every instruction is behaving correctly, make sure that it's be behaving consistently with at the speed that I want it to behave at. For the reliable test, we want every instruction. The tight loops, RXTX, UART, tests, memory access. We want mathematics, overflows. Those are the main tests we want there. It's a lot harder for me to actually run any sort of automated test unless I have some sort of visual output that the, the processor is driving itself. I need to implement I squared C. Once I have I squared C, I can drive the digits on here with I squared C and then I can have sort of debug indicators on here on, on which test is performing, if it's passing. That will let me run test code on the processor and see where it's breaking and how far it gets. And then once I have the feather for this, I can produce the final PCB for the GK110. This doesn't have to be all the way down here. I can produce the P final PCB for this way sooner. It might take me several iterations. I want to do this probably before I harden it, I'll have to iterate on the final PCB design, at the same time I'm hardening the processor because that those can kind of go in parallel. PCBs take a while to ship. If I have to go through two or three iterations on that, then I need to write the calculator operating system. I need to design the 3D case. This is, whew. So this is the part that I don't really know. After I do all of that, which is a decent amount of work, I will have the C110 calculator. Now I need to prototype GK64 motherboard. 
So the GK64 motherboard is basically, I, I already have proved the concept will work with this. From that point, all that needs is two feather slots. I want to basically put, be able to put two computers in there. If you have both sides populated, you can jumper like the RX TX lines together and have them talk over UART. Then I want per board segment, how many, I want at least four, 12 wing slots, power supply. I need a USB header as the header. And I think that's it, right? Oh, no, 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 no. And then we want VGA output. That's the other thing that's gonna be interesting. The VGA is a 16-bit number coming out. So you need 16 wires. That's gonna be a custom, a custom board. We're gonna reduce this. The tiny FPGA, and I'm not gonna adapt that onto a feather board. And that'll be the easiest. I won't have to adapt it. Two feather slots plus two uh, tiny FPGA slots, so I can I can populate the tiny FPGA or populate the feather. It also needs power for feather. So I need to be able to power it either way. I would like to be able to run this off a of battery. It's a portable computer at that point. It won't run for long unless I put a hefty battery in there. Who knows, we'll find out. On, off, switch, power LED. The case has a power LED on it. I'm tempted to throw some game ports on here, but I wanna, yeah, I'm gonna put some game ports on there. I can hook up game pads that way. Like that's, that's, yeah. I got, I got to do it. I got to do it. I need the SD card reader. That's the motherboard. Um, we're going to have to prototype that. That's going to be several iterations. I need GKOS. USB to Microsys interface. I don't know how that's going to work. I need to figure that out. I also need the VGA for this computer. I'm not 100% sure how I'm going to do that. And then I'll write the GKOS. All of that has to fit in the 8K words of memory available on the tiny FPGA. And then putting it all together, I have a retro computer. And that is my plan. It's gonna be awesome. You should subscribe.